Hello, hello, hello again. This is Rosina Starr. Here we are. Welcome to my channel. Please like, subscribe, and share if you like the information that I have to share. So today we are going to talk about the gray rock method. If you don't know what gray rock is, it is just boring, very nonchalant, just like you would see on the ground. A gray rock, just nothing great about it, just sits there, doesn't do anything. And very responsive rather than reactive because a rock doesn't have emotions, does it? That's why we have to really consider responding to the narcissist rather than reacting. That will be a different video I will get to later on in my series. So how gray rock works um, with a narcissist is I'm going to give some examples of um, situations that I was in personally and how it failed for me and what I should have done that works since because I've tested all my methods to know they kind of work, right? So um, the narcissist at the beginning of the relationship gets to know you. They get to know your sentimental values on things. They get to know who you are. They get to know what you stand for. They get to know uh, how you feel about, you know, even internal values, you know, core values of who you are, you know, um, if you're going to stand for this, if you're going to fall for that. They may, they may even set up situations to make you fail and you pass, and it makes them even more angry because people that are usually... Um, not wired right, want people that make mistakes because the overwhelming shame they feel being around good people consumes them. And for you not to say anything about it, sometimes can make them more angry, violent, and volcanic, which is why I call it a volcanic eruption. Some people call it narcissistic rage is on the prowl. So here we go. So I was sitting in my room one day and my narcissistic ex came over to my house. And he says to me, he walks in, and um, he walks over to a tray of stuff that he had put there from the night before, and he's looking at it, picking it up, and he says to me, you know about you? You make me feel really bad about myself sometimes. You just make me feel so much shame. And he's across the room, and I said, oh? And he's like, yeah, you know, the way you talk about my pornography use and, you know, I just, I can't get hard for you anymore and it's all your fault and trying to blame his bad habits on the fact that he doesn't want to be intimate with me. He didn't even find me sexually attractive anymore because I think him being gone so much, I grew a brain which he didn't know about yet. And I was very gray rock to him and I said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um... Don't mean it. It's not my intention. He's like, yeah, well, you kind of do. And so then the TV was on. I began to, to pay attention to the TV, you know, and he wasn't okay with that either because he came over there so I could emotionally regulate him. And I wasn't, you know, complying with that demand to feed in and engage him with conversation. I was actually kind of using his own methods against him unknowingly as an empathic person. That's what sometimes empaths do is they take on the qualities of other people and they mirror them unknowingly. Okay. So he's having this conversation and he's going on and on and he's like, you're not paying attention to me. Why aren't you paying attention to me? He raises his arms and he's yelling at this point so loud that you know, my eardrums could have been ringing. I mean, he all of a sudden started just yelling. And what did I do? I sat there like this in front of the TV. I moved my spot closer to the TV. So now the TV's maybe three feet away from me and I'm sitting on the floor rather than my bed. And he's pacing across the room, pacing across the room to try to get that supply. I'm not paying attention and I'm not paying attention. What does he do? He puts his fist right through a sentimental mirror that he knew meant a lot to me. And he cracked my mirror. And I had very few things at this time, okay? My mirror was something I appreciated, I liked, and he knew meant a lot. And that brought me to tears. And I was like, how could you break something that means so much to me? And this is when I didn't really want him around anymore. And I think he knew that. He knew his time was limited. But he already had that supply lined up and maybe things weren't going well, I don't know. But instead of using me sexually as the primary, he moved me to be an emotional regular, regular person for a secondary supply toward the end. And that wasn't really working because he was conflicted, I think, between the two people. But it's really complicated for me to even understand 
but I, I was just so, I was drained for two or three days after that day he left me in tears. But what he did offer to do, and he tried to do recently in my life, is he will damage big ticket items or things that mean a lot because then he'll offer to fix them for you. He will be so nice and say, you know, I'll buy you a new TV because I broke the new one we bought. I'll buy you the new mirror that, you know, I broke. So then you have to deal with them being around again. So it's like they want to fix the problem that they caused, which shouldn't have even happened. There was no reason in the world for him, for him to break that mirror. And when on his way out, as I was showing him the door, he pushed me and I fell because I was so tired and, and weeping and he didn't want to leave. He left very begrudgingly. I was like, you pushed me down. He's like, you fell. See, and that's the kind of gaslighting. That's the kind of treatment when you ignore a narcissist. You better be prepared if you let them back through that door. You're going to pay for the punishment of ignoring them. They hate to be ignored. And they hate that you don't acknowledge them. It's okay for them to do it to you. But if you are on the other end of that, it's they keep track and they never forget. So anyway, um, another situation that I had this whole gray rock thing pretty much blow up in my face. Um, and, and with the mirror, I want to get to the conclusion on that. How I should have handled it was either physically leaving the house, getting in my car and leaving without him knowing. Just going downstairs acting like I'm going to do something and actually physically leaving the house. Maybe even going on a walk. Because, you know, you can't be afraid of what they're going to do because they're more interested about your reaction right? I, I think I would have physically left or I would have actually, you know what? What is it that you need, honey? Y you disassociate in the moment and you detach from the person. So actually you don't absorb that energy and you can actually reflect it. It's a really good method that I'll use and I'll show you later on in a different video. So another way that this um, haunted me and didn't work to my favor is it was uh, an ex's birthday of mine. His name was Eric. And we were in Wisconsin Dells with his family for his birthday one year. Of course, his grandma paid for everything because he didn't have any money. So we had this nice room, and of course, he was very, very withdrawn towards me. I don't want to deal with you. I want to gamble. I want to go to Ho-Chunk Casino with my family. This isn't about you. It's my birthday. Don't let me forget. So anyway, I had too much to drink, and um, I took a party bus back to the hotel we were at because that's all that was available at the time. He came to check on me, looked at my phone, and as I was trying to call him on the bus on the way back, I accidentally pressed D instead of E because, you know, you're drunk, you're drinking. You know, I was actually in tears too, so it was hard to see my, my phone screen, I remember, just being really upset. And he didn't make sure I got back to the room, didn't give a shit if I got there. You know, and then he actually got back to the room, was looking at my phone, shoves me off the bed with one arm onto the floor, wraps my head up in a, in a plastic bag, and drags me into the bathroom as I'm kicking and screaming, what is going on? And then he finally brings me into the bathroom. He rips the bag away from my face. And as he was ripping the bag and dragging me to the bathroom, he ripped out my earring. And I just bought brand new earrings and I was happy to wear them for his birthday. So he then said, how could you call other guys on my birthday? How could you call them? I said, oh my gosh, I accidentally had an outgoing call. And it was funny when you called the number, the number was disconnected and no longer working. But see, it was the fact that he saw that name. I think his name was Dan or something at the time. D and E close together. There was no kind of call history of how long, you know, there was nothing, you know, it just said that I had called but hung up the phone. It wasn't that there was that conversation, well, you already deleted it and blah, blah, blah. So right there, he was telling on himself about how he lives and what he does and who he is. It really didn't have anything to do with me. But see, I was in my 20s and I didn't know any better. And then I was like, you know, I just want to go home. Take me back to my house now. And so he was driving the car and he explained to his grandma after he, you know, called me every name in the book, he finally calmed down and I didn't give him any kind of reaction. Um, he, we're driving in the car all of a sudden, it's just really quiet. What's wrong with me? I said, I don't know, but that better not ever happen again. 
if you want to date me because I will not stay with you. And he said, it will never happen again. And, and I'm just so sorry, Zena. But so we got past that. And, you know, the way he made it up to me is he stayed the night at his mom's house with whoever. Who knows? I, I just had a night to myself. He goes out and buys these earrings that are just dull, that are just a pin of what I had before, and says, here you go. I replaced your earrings. Aren't you happy? He accused me of wearing jewelry from another guy. I had the receipt for it. He still didn't believe me. But anyway, I didn't like the earrings he got me. However, I didn't want to seem ungrateful either, so I took the earrings and I never wore them. They were not shiny and not my style. I put them away and then eventually I tried to wear them and they actually ended up infecting my ears. And at that point, I never wore earrings again. I didn't do the inner work to heal at that age and I just never desired to wear earrings after that day. So that was when gray rock really hurt me is it didn't diffuse anything. It actually escalated the reaction for some reason. Um, if I could go back, I wouldn't have forgiven him and I would have left after that day, changed my number and nailed the door shut. So the next example I'm gonna give you is my mom during Mother's Day this last year. She is a narcissistic sociopathic person and I was staying with her temporarily until I bought this duplex I'm sitting in now in Rockford, Illinois. And it was Mother's Day and she had been seeing this black guy that was living with her and she was paying for him because he doesn't have a job. Whatever the case, uh, we were raised opposite of what she's doing now and how she's living, but I didn't ever judge her decisions. But I just really see the difference in treatment of her children compared to who she's seeing intimately which is the guy intimately will always mean more than you and I hate you if you make him upset or make him go away. So she'll treat you as though you're a threat in the atmosphere and you're the one that doesn't belong and they're almost trying to use me as the entertainment. So what happened was I sold my house and I didn't want to use my real estate money that I had got for selling the house to buy a house in Florida with her and the black guy. Because he's just, you know, that's his meal ticket as my mom. You know, she worked 40 years and gave nothing to anybody. She's very stingy. She's very rigid and she's very rude. Um, so anyway, she would talk to him about people all the time and gossip and say, well, I don't like the way this person is treating me and I don't like how this person is being and I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Why don't you do something about it? Why don't you help me? And so then she would put them, in, put him in this triangulation stage, kind of like she's the puppet master and he's the puppet. What do you need for me, Rose? I'm right on top of that, Rose. What can I get for you today, Rose? He's the pet. Every rich person needs a pet, right? Especially if they're a narcissist, nobody else can stand them. So anyway, um, I have a cat and she's just saying hello. So anyways, during Mother's Day, I had a vitamin D2 deficiency so bad I had to take uh, 50,000 IU a week for about eight months and I was in the middle of that treatment. So during that treatment, if you don't know about that, you get really tired, fatigued, there's side effects of that because it's, they don't even sell it in stores. So I was, you know, sleeping a lot of the time, I didn't feel well, and it was to be understood that that's, you know, what I'm going through. Well, nobody cared. I mean, these people, they, they don't care about your health. Give a crap if you live or die. So anyway, um, she had said to me, it's Mother's Day. I said, it sure is. Here's a card. And I gave her a hug, said, happy Mother's Day. So then she comes back down later on that day and says, I want a cake from Dairy Queen. I was like, maybe I can get one for you later this week, Mom, but I really don't feel well today. You know, I'm taking my supplements and, and I just, I'm going to sleep. I don't feel well. And she stood there with her arms and she looked at me with a stare for about 30 seconds. And then she walked upstairs, started talking to that guy. And later on that day, I came up to ask something about something, I forget. And all of a sudden, it was a casual conversation gone wrong and I said, or she brought up the cake again, and I said, why couldn't he go and buy you the cake if it was so important? 
Is it because he doesn't have any money? What is the problem? Why am I in charge of buying you a Mother's Day cake? I gave you a hug and a card. I thought that that would be fine. So he gets up and he goes, you emotionally hurt her and now I'm physically going to hurt you. He pushes me at my shoulders like I'm a guy. And we're standing, you know, shoulder length apart. And I fall over a chair and get a bruise. And it's pitch dark in the next room because we're in like a dining room area with, you know, separate rooms. You know, there's the little square, uh, you know, room separator there. And, you know, everything is just so. And my mom has some really antique hardwood furniture in there. And I fall to the floor. I land on my arm. And he then, and I stood up and he lunged again to try to, to try to push me. And as I'm trying to guard him away, he tried, he tried to say, I tried to claw his face. He's black, it was dark in there, I don't know. I wouldn't try to claw, claw anybody's face and I wouldn't start a confrontation physically because I care too much about my looks to do so. With anybody, it doesn't matter what the, the problem is. So anyway, she watches crime shows all day long and he is there with her and she watches Judge Judy a lot. She's all into true crime. I don't know what that does for somebody's brain 24-7. She has nothing to do. She's a retired old woman from a post office job. She was a factory worker herself. So she never really had any goals or things to live by. And she only married my dad because he was good looking, knew it wouldn't work on the honeymoon. Stayed with him anyway. And then divorced him eight years later. But anyway, so... You know, I physically got harmed. I ran across the room after I had fallen once again or been accused of doing something to him, went downstairs, was sitting on the floor with my arm like this, just in like a fetal position in a corner. And my mom goes, oh, your arm hurts. It'll take some time to heal, but you'll be okay. Goes in the next room to start doing laundry like nothing ever happened. She instigated the entire thing. After it happened, I figured it out. She wants me in harm's way. She wants me hurt. And she actually admitted she doesn't care if I live or die. And it would be better if I died because when I filed for bankruptcy, I put a duplex that I paid off in her name. And she wants that duplex to herself. And when I quit working so much and basing my life on money and just living, and trying to be happy, she hated me for that. She despised anything that I did unless it helped her look better on paper. And she dangled a carrot, oh, I'll sign it over to you, I'll sign it over for you, to you. She never will. And she even had her puppet reassure me that in, she never will. And I'm lucky to get scraps out of that account. You know what? I am going to get the word out there about these people. And my inheritance is joy and peace of mind. So in this case, Gray Rock didn't really help me either. Turns out she wanted to call the cops on me and make me go to jail because then I couldn't really use the account money either and trying to trap me into a place where I have to submit to somebody's authority because I wasn't listening to hers. So Gray Rock can either help you or hurt you. Those are the ways I handled it at the time. What I would have done differently will be in a next video. Thanks for listening. This is Rosina Starr.